The Origins of the Schofield Reference Bible By David Dunlap The Schofield Reference Bible has proven to be an immeasurable aid in guiding generations of serious Christians into a greater understanding of God's Word. Within 30 years of its assurance Oxford University Press reported that 1,925,000 copies had been published, and in our own day, the Schofield Bible remains one of the most popular reference study Bibles available. Who was C. I. Schofield? How did this reference Bible originate? Cyrus Ingerson Schofield was born August 19, 1843. During the Civil War he served with distinction as a Confederate soldier, earning the Confederate Cross of Honor. After the war he studied law in St. Louis, Missouri, and was later admitted to the Kansas Bar. In 1873 he was appointed to the United States Attorney for Kansas by President Grant. He was converted in 1879 through the efforts of a YMCA worker named Thomas McFeeters. Not long after his conversion, he made the acquaintance of James H. Brooks. Brooks helped him in his study of the Bible and introduced him to dispensational teaching. Early Ministry in Dallas, Texas While serving at the First Congregational Church, Independent, in Dallas, Texas, Schofield deepened his understanding of the Scriptures. This congregation numbered only 14 members when he came to teach the Word of God in 1882. When he left, after 13 years of faithful ministry, this church numbered 814 members. On the last Sunday of ministry at this church the members presented him with a letter of commendation which reflected the depth of his Christian character. This letter contained the following, We commend him to you as one who delights to hide behind the uplifted cross of Jesus, one who will preach a full and free salvation through the shed blood of God's Lamb, one who will lead you into the deep things of the Word of God, and one who preaches the whole truth of God. During this time C. Ia Schofield became a popular speaker and in demand at Bible conferences throughout the country. In 1903, he began to work on the Reference Bible. The idea of a Reference Bible had been growing in his mind for some time, he was already busy writing a Bible study course. In 1902, he had received encouragement in this work from Arno C. Gabeline, and later from three men who organized the Sea Cliff Bible Conference in Sea Cliff, New York Alwyn Ball, Jr., John Peary, and Francis Fitch. All three of these men fellowshiped at so called Brethren Assemblies in the New York City area. Francis Fitch had a printing establishment that printed the New York Stock Exchange lists, and he acted as publisher of the Schofield Bible Course in its first years. John Peary was a partner in Chicago's large department store, Carson, Peary and Scott. Alwyn Ball, Jr., a successful real estate broker, was a partner in the New York firm South Hack and Ball. The Beginning of the Reference Bible From 1901 to 1906, Bible conferences were held on Peary Green, also called Reservoir Park, because the water tower was located there. John Peary, who owned the water company, erected a tent for the conferences, which seated 600 people. Later the conference grew to attract 5,000. Some early speakers were Richard Hill, John Hill, Arno Gabeline, C. I. Schofield and William Isaac, in whose home the Sea Cliff Assembly began. At one of these conferences, C. I. S. Schofield, while walking along the Sea Cliff shoreline with Arno Gabeline, discussed this desire to produce a reference Bible that would help readers understand the Bible more clearly. To give him time and the facilities for this work, John Perry and Alwyn Ball financially supported him. Much of the study and final drafts were completed in the home of John Perry, Gracingles, in Long Island, New York. When perfected in organization, a local church consists of saints, with elders and deacons. Annotation 4. When perfected in organization, a local church consists of saints, with elders and deacons. Annotation 4. Philippians 1 verse 1, this appreciation for the brethren was the result of an intimate acquaintance with their writings and an abiding friendship with many of their leading Bible teachers. Mr. Schofield greatly valued the writings of the early brethren and often shared the conference platform with assembly Bible teachers such as Walter Scott, F. C. A. Jennings, and W. W. Faraday. He fellowshiped between the years 1902 to 1909 in an assembly in Oxford, England while researching material for the reference Bible. One of Schofield's most valued editors, Arno C. Gabeline, once wrote concerning his appreciation of brethren writers, I found in Darby's writings, in the works of William Kelly, C. H. McIntosh, F. W. Grant, Bellet, and others, soul food I needed. 
I esteem these men next to the apostles in their sound and spiritual teaching. Mr. Schofield appreciated the editorial help he received from those in assembly fellowship in the United States and Great Britain. The Formation of the Reference Bible The trusted Bible teacher and author, Mr. Walter Scott, reviewed many of the notes in the first edition. In the preface of that edition Schofield writes, the editor's acknowledgments are also due to a very wide circle of leaned-in spiritual brethren in Europe and America to whose labors he is indebted for suggestions of inestimable value. Mr. Walter Scott, the Eminent Bible Teacher After the issuing of the first edition, Mr. William Isaac, a leading elder and outstanding Bible teacher in the Sea Cliff Assembly, expressed concern as to the accuracy of 17 of Mr. Schofield's annotations. He graciously submitted them to Mr. Schofield in writing. The second edition of 1917 included the accepted corrections of Mr. Isaac. When seeking help in the proofreading work of the reference Bible, Mr. Schofield enlisted the services of one of the best, Miss Emily Farmer. In 1907 Miss Farmer moved from Colchester, England to the United States and soon distinguished herself as an accurate and able proofreader with the Loiseau Brothers Publishers in New York, where she remained until 1947. In 1908 she took a short leave from their employ to dedicate time to the reference Bible. Miss Farmer was used to give editorial assistance in preparing the notes in their final form. Miss Farmer was also greatly used in editing the commentaries of Mr. H. A. Ironside and in the foreword of Mr. H. A. Ironside's commentary on Isaiah we read these words of praise, the excellence of the Schofield Bible today is attributable in no small measure to Miss Farmer's keen discernment of sound doctrine. The Oxford University Press and the Reference Bible Mr. Schofield visited England twice and spent two years in Switzerland while researching material and seeking technical advice concerning the publication of the study Bible. One man who would prove to be invaluable in the latter regard was Mr. Henry Froud of London. Mr. Froud fellowshiped all his adult life with those known as the Brethren and had distinguished himself as an authority in he printing and binding of Bibles. In 1880 he was appointed publisher to the Oxford University Press and the Clarendon Press. He achieved at the Oxford University Press what was once considered impossible, the distribution of one million New Testaments in one twelve-hour period. While in England, with the encouragement of Alwyn Ball of New York, Mr. Schofield was introduced to Mr. Froud. After meeting with Mr. Froud, Schofield was advised, there is only one publishing house which can handle your reference Bible, and that is the Oxford University Press, and in January of 1909 the first reference Bible rolled off the presses. Since that time, the Schofield Reference Bible has been published in French, Spanish, Swahili and in 90 other languages. This study help has ably equipped thousands of Christian workers, evangelists, and Sunday school teachers to better understand the Word of God and, thereby, serve the Lord more effectively. In his commentary on the Sermon on the Mount, the Reformed preacher and author Montgomery Boyce writes, I am delighted to say that the Schofield Bible was a great influence upon my own studies of the Scriptures. Moreover, I have the deepest respect for these Bible teachers. They were steeped in the Bible far more than most Bible teachers today. Only eternity will tell the vast usefulness of this study tool, which has introduced countless numbers into a knowledge of dispensational truth, the prophetic word, and New Testament assembly distinctives. Sources Arno C. Gabeline, The History of the Schofield Reference Bible, Living Law RDS Foundation, Western Australia, 1991. Seacliff Gospel Chapel 1889-1989, A Century of Proclaiming God's Word, Seacliff, New York, 1989. Charles Gallaudet Trumbull, The Life of C. I. Schofield, Oxford University Press, London, 1920. Larry V. E. Crutchfield, The Origins of Dispensationalism, Lanham, Maryland, University Press of America, 1992.